Hello, today we are going to be uploading a print book to Ingram Spark. If you've been around for a while, you know that I highly encourage authors and publishers who are using the print on demand model to upload their print books to Ingram Spark. This will get your book available in all the dot com stores like barnesandnoble.com, bookshop.org, and it also will get your book available in the Ingram Wholesale Catalog. Now, this is important if you plan on pitching your book to bookstores or libraries, because this is where they will order from. They like to order wholesale. Um, actually, retail stores only order wholesale. So having your book in Ingram is really important if you plan to market to those places. So we are going to just jump in. We're going to upload a print book only today. Now, there is a list of things that I recommend you have ready before you get started. It will just make the the process go more smoothly. If you would like that checklist, it's free. Head on over to newshelves.com forward slash IS checklist. So it's newshelves.com forward slash IS checklist. And there's a checklist of things I recommend you have ready and prepped before you get started to ensure you have a smooth process or is as smooth as possible as you upload your print book. So we are going to get started by clicking this print book only button. Notice it is $49. If you are a member of association like IBPA or Ally, you do get a free upload code that works up to five times in one month for uploads and revisions. So if you are prolific or if you um, plan to upload multiple books to Ingram Spark this year, it would make sense that you might consider investing in a membership with one of those associations because you make that price up that you pay for the association within two to three downloads or uploads for, of a book. And so that may make sense in addition to all the other great benefits. So for the print book, we're going to hit print book. And then this is just a question. They also want to make sure you have all of your files ready so you don't get frustrated. So yes, all of my files are ready. And I know that means my PDF interior and my PDF cover. And they're making me check those off as well. This is just Ingram Spark making sure that they're not getting calls because you're missing files. So here we can either choose only print the book. This means that I'm the only one who can access this book and I can print copies for myself, or I can print, distribute, and sell. And this typically is what you'd like to choose. This means that your book is actually getting distributed out to those dot coms, to Ingram Wholesale, so on and so forth. So click and continue. And as we come back over, here is where we need all of our title information. So you want to type that right in. This one is your numbers up. The language is English. So again, it's got a drop down. It's fairly easy. You have all these options. You definitely want to have your print ISBN on hand. Make sure it is the correct ISBN. And we're going to drop that right in there. Um, now, of course, I recommend that you own your own ISBN. I know a lot of people offer a free ISBN, but it always comes with strings attached because the person who owns the ISBN is the person who has the distribution and print rights for that edition or version of your book. I think as the publisher, as the author, you should own that. It is a bit of an investment, but I definitely think it's worth it. So I won't harp on that too much, but we definitely recommend you own your own. If you're in the U.S., that means you buy your ISBN from Valker. The website is myidentifiers.com. If you're in the U.K., you buy from Nielsen. Canada, you would actually just request them from your government and you get them free. So definitely different options. And then, yes, Ingram Spark does offer a free ISBN, but again, that comes with strings attached. And even Ingram Spark does not recommend that. So. All right, and then you have to click whether you own the copyright or if it's public domain. So in this case, we own the copyright for this book. And then there's this list of questions. Does your title include someone's name, uh, the name of a famous company? Essentially, they're trying to make sure that you are not going to get hit for any trademark issues. I cannot use Kim Kardashian's name in my book willy-nilly. 
So these are the types of things that they're just checking on to help make sure that you stay within the laws and every Thing so you don't get dinged. So no, my title does not include any of the above. All right, and then we have the option here to show more fields. So this is where we can add a book subtitle, a series name, series number, or an edition. So if this is a special print edition or if it's a second edition, we could add that information here. Not required, but it is an option. This book doesn't need that but certainly add it in if you have it. And then you get to the author. So this book was written by Mary Lou, uh, one name, Ambrose. So we've got Mary Lou's name right there. If you have a middle name or a suffix, you can add that in. Now you also have the option of putting in contributor information, which I do recommend if you have it. You can put in country, state, city, and then you can also do a short biography. So this is something that you can do when you're setting up, or you can come back and add it later. Since I'm uploading this book for Mary Lou on her account with permission, I am going to leave this blank and allow her to fill that in later. And you can also add a contributor. So if there was an illustrator or a second author, then you could add that in right here. And they have the same fields as well. You can also give them a bio and so on and so forth. So I'm going to get rid of that because we don't have one for this book. And then we need to make sure that we're adding our imprint. So our imprint is essentially the name that we're publishing under and the name that our ISBNs are registered under. So in this case, we want to add an imprint because Mary Lou is publishing under Stone Bear. And so we want to make sure that we are adding that imprint in. It's fairly easy, and I do have a whole article. If you go to newshelves.com, I've got a whole article on how to name your publishing company and your imprint, so I will make sure to link to that. But for this one, we're just going to put the imprint in and add imprint. As easy as that, and within a minute or two, it's right there. So I'm going to click right on there. And then we have to add our subject. So these are our BISAC codes. And there are a couple of ways you can decide on your BISACs for Ingram Spark. You can either go to the BISAC website and you can actually search those ahead of time and know what your codes are to get started. So I've done that and I happen to know that I have um, a humor code. Let's do that one first. I have a humor code here that I can just drop in and then I can search and it pulls it right up, humor general. And so I can then click on that and add the subject. But we could also just search. If you don't know what BISAC and you know your categories, well, I could say amateur because I want an amateur sleuth and it pops right up. So I'll add that in. And you can have up to three. Typically, if you have three, you should put three. Um, you want to go with one that's kind of more general and then one or two that are more focused on your specific book, genre, and niche. So let's say we want paranormal because it's a paranormal mystery. So if I type paranormal, you can see it's showing up in a lot more options, juvenile fiction and nonfiction, young adult. So juvenile would be up to 12 years old. Young adult typically is 13 to 17. And then adult fiction is 18 and up. So you can see it pulls up a lot of options. I need to either go through these and pick one or do a more specific search. This actually pulled up mystery detective, cozy paranormal, which is exactly what I wanted. So we've got three subjects in here, which is what you are recommended for, and you can't do more than that. And then we have to select our audience. So this is who's going to be reading the book. College is typically, if we are specifically speaking to a textbook, it doesn't mean college age, it means textbook. Elementary and high school textbook is the same thing. This does not mean that elementary and high school students may read it. It's meant that this is more of an educational tool. Juvenile, as I mentioned, is 0 to 12. 
professional scholar is again more of a textbook type of book. This is not your average nonfiction book. This is something that is more of a teaching tool or a professional tool. Trade general is what most adult books are going to be. And then of course, young adult, 13 to 18 or 13 to 17. We're going to drop that in. And once again, we have these little arrows of show more fields. So we can add more information in if we have it and if it makes sense. So we could do a table of contents. Doesn't necessarily make sense, especially for a mystery book, if it's got something like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. But if you have a nonfiction book and it's got a table of contents that actually names what people will be reading and learning about, that could make sense. You may also add review quotes in. So if you have a review from, let's say, Kirkus or Book Life, something like that, you could drop it in here. So we could say the best book ever written. Oops, we should definitely type it correctly. And then say reviewer. Obviously, I just made this up. But you do have the availability to kind of adjust this a little bit. I could put in some bold, I could underline. So these are options in there. And I recommend that if you have professional reviews or endorsements, mind you, these are not reviews from Amazon. These are professional reviews and endorsements from a tra trade publication. It may be from a review blog, um, something along those lines. You can certainly add it in there and you can adjust it for formatting. And then we have our title description. Now, the title description is your full description. This is the whole Monty. I happen to have this over in a Word document, so I'm going to grab that and just paste it over. Again, where that checklist comes in handy because it's all in one spot. So I've put this in, and then you do want to go in. You want to format it. You want to make this look nice. You'll notice that I have white space in between each paragraph. Now, that was really something I did on purpose. When you give white space on a sales page, it is easier to skim and to read. It is more user-friendly. I've also made my headline bright and bold. I often say that you've got about four seconds to hook a reader once you get them over to your sales page, which is why our tagline, our headline, is going to be bright and bold up here. We're going to go into the description, and then we'll have a call to action and um, kind of a closer at the end. So we've got that here. Then we get into our keywords. And again, I mentioned that you want to have keywords. Typically, you want somewhere between seven and 12 keywords. These you will separate by semicolons. And you just type them in. This is you thinking, what might people search when they're looking for my book? So that could look something like typing out cozy mystery um, paranormal, and so on and so forth. So you do want to have a handful, again, seven to 12. You don't want to go crazy. This is not a spot to put, you know, 50 keywords, but it is something where you want to put um, a nice handful so that you've got those available and it makes your metadata stronger. It makes your book more searchable. So I had a list already because I was prepped. So I dropped those in here and we're ready to go. And then once again, we've got this spot where we can add extra information. Now this is our short description. And when I say short, I do mean short. So what I'm going to do, typically you can come up with a very short pitch for the book, but I am typically going to use my closing statement or my tagline and pop it in there. Now you can see it's allowed to be 250 bytes. This comes in at 199 bytes. So this short description might show up if I advertise with Ingram or Ingram Spark, different places like that. Um, and the idea is to give a taste for the book. We don't need to give the entire story. We just need to give a taste for the book, which is what we've done here. Once we get to this point, we're going to continue. It will automatically save when you hit continue. If you hit save and exit, it will take you to your home page. So continue on. And here is where we get to the exciting parts. This is where we are going to be choosing our trim size, which of course is already predetermined. 
because this is based on the formatting that we did when we actually set the book up. So you can choose from their most common or you can go into the drop down. This book in particular is going to be a six by nine. Um, I'm sorry, this is a five and a half by eight and a half. And you can always check that by opening up your uh, PDF file and going to properties. If you hit the properties button, it will show you what size your book is. So we click that and it automatically shows up. Again, there is a whole list. So if you don't see it in the most popular, you can go through the list and pick your size. And then we're going to choose if it's black and white or color. This is a mystery novel, it's black and white. Um, we are going to go with cream paper. Typically the trend right now is if you're writing fiction, you're going with cream paper. If you're writing nonfiction, Typically, we're seeing white. The thinner paper is very common. Um, the thicker paper is really used more when you have um, like a children's book or a photo book. You need something a little richer. And then groundwood is that really thin paper that mimics what you would see in a mass market paperback. It's often considered a little see-through. So some people will use that but not a ton. If you're trying to make your book a little smaller, you might, or if you're doing a mass market paperback size, you might use that. But typically for fiction, we're going cream. Then we have our binding. This is in particular a paperback. And you can see that Ingram Spark has really upped their game and made this very user-friendly. It leads you right into your next option. Perfect bound, absolutely. Then I have to know, is my cover going to be gloss or matte? Well, this cover is matte. Uh, I get asked the question all the time, should I go gloss or should I go matte? And I will say that matte covers are trending right now. Now this changes every couple of years, but matte covers for both fiction and nonfiction and adult is what's trending. Um, if you have a children's book, gloss is typically what you go with. And I'm talking juvenile 12 and under, you wanna go with gloss. And the reason why is because kids tend to have icky fingers, whether it's from playing outside or eating a snack. And that gloss cover keeps the book protected a little bit more. So typically children's books will see in gloss and then matte for most other books. It is a personalized style though. Every once in a while, you'll have a book that the colors on the cover just don't pop in matte. You may choose gloss. So personal decision, but that's kind of what's trending right now. Um, and then they're asking, do we have a duplex enabled cover? So you can, by the way, there's these little help buttons where it explains what in the world is duplex. Well, duplex, duplex cover means that you can print on the inside cover of your paperback book. Now, of course, this comes with additional print charges. So keep that in mind. And this book is not duplex enabled. Sometimes you'll see that in books that are like high fantasy, young adult books tend to use that a little bit. So no for us, but now you know what it is and you know these little helpful buttons are available to you. Then we need to know the page count. When we're looking at the page count, this is the total PDF page count. This is not how many pages your book says it is. So if your books are numbered, your pages are numbered, it may say it's a 262 page book, but your PDF file is 276 pages. And that's what we need to focus on. Then we choose our main market, which for us is the United States. And it tells us how much it is to cost or, uh, to actually print the book. This book in particular with these settings is $5.14. That is what the author will pay for each printing of the book. Then we get down to retail pricing and we are going to put in the retail pricing the author has chosen. And what's super cool here is that when you then do that, it will auto set up what the current conversions are for other countries. So you can go by that or you can set your own price, it's up to you. And then you need to set the wholesale discount. If you are hoping to sell to retail stores, if you're hoping to get your book into bookstores, they will expect what we call a full trade discount. And a full trade discount is a 40% discount to stores, which means that we have to set our Ingram Spec discount to 55%. And you may be wondering, okay, but if it's 55, why do they only get 40? Where does the other 15% go? 
And the answer to that is that 15% goes to Ingram Wholesale. That is their fee for selling and distributing your book. So 40% of the discount goes to the, the person buying the book from Ingram Wholesale, a library, a bookstore, someone like that. 15% of the discount, which is off of, the discount is from the retail price. So it's 55% off of $13.99. So 15% of that goes to Ingram Wholesale for listing you on their catalog, for selling the book and distributing it. And then the remainder is what you actually make. So if we do the math there, we would take $13.99 and we would take the 55%. And that means that the discount coming off is roughly $7.70. So we are then going to take $13.99 and we are going to minus out $7.70, which leads us with $6.29. But then we, as the author or the publisher, also have to pay the print cost. So you take that $6.29 and you are going to take out $5.14, which leaves me with $1.15, leaves them with $1.16. It's probably where I rounded with my decimals, but that is how we get your final compensation. That is what the author or the publisher will make per book sold through Ingram Spark and Ingram Wholesale. So that's important to know because if my price is too low, let's say I was trying to sell this book for $9.99. You will notice that I can't do that because it would literally be putting me in the hole with the price. I would either have to change my discount and offer less of a discount, which means retail stores would not be interested in my book because it's not discounted properly for them, or I have to increase my price. So in this case, our price was already at $13.99. We can offer the full trade discount. Now, the other thing to consider is returns. If you are selling to a retail or bookstore, they typically do require that you set your book for returns. And when you do that, you can either say, yes, I'd like them delivered, which means that the books would be delivered to you upon return, which sounds fantastic. However, there is this little bit of information down here that tells us that those return fees for cost is going to be on you. So there's a $3 per book for US returns to a US address and $20 per book for US returns to an international address. That is being charged to you. So in addition to those sales being returned and you being charged back for the sale, you also are getting charged $3 per book for it to be returned. So keep that in mind and keep in mind that the books being returned to you must be saleable condition, but that's a pretty loose term. It means essentially the books can't be trashed. So you have to think very carefully about whether you actually want books coming back to you and if you're willing to pay the $3 per book, keeping in mind what you actually made on it, that that's going to be charged back to you and how little the book or how much the book costs to print. So in this case, a $5 book, and then you're going to pay a $3 return fee, it may not be worth it. There's another option, yes, destroy. And this means that when a book is being returned, rather than actually shipping the book back, what the, the store or whoever's returning it has to do is they rip off the front cover and they send the front cover back. That is the proof that it's been destroyed. They're not selling the book and still, you know, sending it back for a return. That is why sometimes you may occasionally online see pictures of dumpsters filled with books with no covers and it makes readers everywhere sad. Well, this is why those books are typically being returned. So most of the time, if you're going to offer returns, I recommend that you do the yes destroy. This actually ends up being less costly because you're not paying the return fees and then you don't have a ton of books. Now, of course, we want to avoid any returns in the first place, but in the eventuality that it does happen, I recommend destroy. Keep in mind that if books are 
return to you, that's a financial hit that you need to plan for. And if you're not willing to take that risk, you're not willing to take the returns, then you set your return policy to no, simply saying that you will not take returns of the book. Now, again, keep in mind that a lot of retailers, such as Barnes & Noble or bookstores, may not stock a book if there is no return policy, because for them, having returns is like a safety net. It means if they buy 100 copies of your book and only sell two, they are not out a bunch of money. So they are more likely to take a chance on stocking your book if you offer a return policy. Now, this does not affect online sales because online sales truly work a lot like Amazon for print on demand, meaning that the book is only being printed and shipped when a customer orders it. So you're not going to see those returns online um, typically. And again, the dot coms will still sell it with no return. So again, a very personal and business decision. You definitely need to look into this. You need to have the information of why you would consider returns or not, why you would set your discount or not, and then do what's right for you and your business. So in this case, we're going to offer a trade discount. We want this book available at the full trade discount, but we're not going to offer returns for this book because the publisher has decided it's not in their best interest at the moment. So we're going to set that through. And you can set different discounts for different um, countries. So that's important to note as well. You may say, my book mainly is, is meant for the U.S. market. It's American history. So I'm going to do a 55% discount here, and then I'm going to do a smaller discount elsewhere. Do you keep in mind, depending on the market, it is required that you offer a at least either a 30 or a 35% discount, depending on the market you'll see that that differs. So you do have to be willing to offer some discount. So we've made our decisions. And then once again, Ingram Spark is saying, please acknowledge your choices. If we had returns, that information here was different where it explained what that meant. This is Ingram Spark doing their due diligence, trying to make sure that they are equipping authors and publishers to make smart decisions and that they understand the decisions and the terms they're setting for their book, which also means Ingram Spark is not responsible if you get a bunch of returns and you have to pay that money out. Then we have our print options. Is your book a large, a large text edition? This means the text obviously is much larger. Do we want to enable a look inside? Most cases we do want to look inside. It helps sell, sell books or if you have right to left content. So this means that your content is um, in reverse of what it usually would be. If we're in the US, we don't need that. So scroll on by. And then we need to set our publication date. We can set our publication date in the future. We can say, I would like this to come out December 23rd. Then you see the show more fields. This is where we can set our on sale date sooner. Again, this little help button, is super awesome. So the on sale date is the date before which the title may not be sold by retailers. So typically the on sale date and the sale date are one and the same, but there are cases where you may want to hold the sale where um, retailers can buy it sooner and the on sale date is later or vice versa. So there is that option there, which you may or may not want to do. Now, this book in particular, we're ready for it to go live anytime. So we are going to put today's date on there. And then we already went over this. And then once again, we're going to continue. All right, now we get to the good part. This is where we are actually going to upload our files, which you will want to have handy. So you need your PDF print interior and you also need your print cover. So I already have these available. They are nice and handy for me. So I'm going to just grab those and they're organized. And here we go. We've got our cover and we've got our interior. So this is the interior. I'm going to put it right in. 
And then we have our cover. Now keep in mind, if you are looking for retail sales, many retailers, including places like Barnes and Noble, have it right in their terms that they require a priced barcode. I do recommend this. We do have a video on how to create your own priced barcode, and I will link to that. Um, but just know if you don't have a barcode, Ingram Spark will add one for you, but is not price specific. If you hope to get into, into retailers, in stores, in shelves, in airport stores, you need a price specific barcode, which again, I'll link to the video on how to do that. It's very easy. You can pay for one or you can do one yourself. So you wanna upload your files and then we go to the next and continue. This is where Ingram Sparks little bots are going through. They are checking everything for metadata errors. They're checking to make sure our files are within standard. And this will take just a few minutes. It's not very long. And then we'll be able to go to our next step. And then once it's done, the continue button will actually be clickable. So we're going to do that. This is where we go on to the payment section. So this is where it's giving us kind of a, an overview of what we uploaded. And then we have to proceed to payment. So first we need to agree that the selections are correct. Once again, Ingram Spark is just covering their, their backsides here to make sure that you've got everything you need because you are going to have to pay for this. And they are saying, you've checked, you've double checked. And there we are. Now, if you have a promo code, like right now there is a promo code, I believe, festive that should work you can type it in and apply if again you are a part of a um, association like ibpa or ally that offers you an upload code this is where you would put that in so that you could have the fee removed before it did say 49 dollars for the upload once we do this it should zero out and allow us to move forward so there we go. So occasionally Ingram Spark does put out a discount code and you can use that or otherwise you would hit the payment button and it would take you through the payment process. So I agree, I'm going to submit. And this is the end where the book actually gets sent to Ingram Spark for further review. And what happens after this is that we wait. We wait. Typically, it can be as short as 24 hours. It can be as long as a week. But what happens is once the book is ready for approval, meaning it's made it through Ingram Sparks um, technical review, what happens is an email is sent to the account holder. And once that happens, you are given a link to come back and approve your title. So I am going to pause our video here. I will come back and we will go through and approve that title in just a couple of days. Okay, so we are back. We submitted this December 15th. On December 16th, Mary Lou got an email saying that her book was ready for approval. So when you log in, you go straight to your homepage and you'll see this approve button. You want to click on that. And you have the option of downloading an e-proof, which is what we are going to do. There we go. So it's got all the information here and we can either email proof for a link or we can just download a proof. I'm going to go for that option and just download it. So we will download a proof over and then we will be able to take a quick look and see if the book looks correct from a digital perspective. Let's pull that up. So what we're looking for here as we look through is we're really looking to make sure, let me make this smaller, we're looking to make sure that everything looks like it's in line, the cover looks right, it looks like um, everything fits. And then we can go through, this is what the front page would look like or the front cover, that all looks right. And we're going to go through the pages and look in general just to make sure that everything looks as it should. You can certainly go line by line and look through. I don't think that's necessary. Usually what we're looking for is we're just making sure that everything's there. Doing a quick browse through to make sure that nothing's cut off, nothing funky going on. And then typically I'll look at the front 
and kind of towards the back, kind of spot check. Now, again, if you wanted to go page by page, you could certainly do that and go through every single page. Just up to you. So this looks good. We've got this here. Yep, looks good to me. So we're going to come back to this tab. And this is where we actually approve the book. So we have options here. We approve the title for printing, distribution, and sale. That means this book will go live. It can now be ordered. It will start to populate on barnesandnoble.com, bookshop.org, and all of those places. Or we could approve this title placed by Mary Lou's account only. So if we wanted to, we could choose this option, approve it only for Mary Lou's account, and then order a copy of the book to get a physical proof before making it go live. Again, it's personal preference. I've been doing this long enough that I am confident in our proof, so I will do this. But there is another option, and this is important. If you have revised content, let's say your cover, you notice there is an error on your cover or something was cut off, you can choose to upload revised content at no additional cost. Once you approve your book file, if you have revised content, you need to upload something new, there's a $25 fee from Ingram Spark. So if you have revised content, if you see something you wanna change, if you go here, and you say that you have revised content to upload, you are not charged that fee. So if you do have something you need to change, this is when you want to do it, um, or you can request further review for something else. But this time everything looks good, so we're going to approve this title for printing and distribution. You can send a, um, a backup confirmation if you'd like. If you'd like a notification, you can send that. Then we're simply going to continue. You have the option then to promote your title with Ingram Spark. Completely up to you. We're going to go no this time. And it will go through and actually be approved. Again, once this is approved, it will start generating out to all the other dot com sales sites. So your number's up. We are going to accept. And there you have it. In a couple of days, we'll start seeing that show up. It'll probably take, I don't know, two, maybe three days for this to show up in the Ingram catalog. So the place where bookstores, retailers, libraries would order from, from Ingram, it'll take two to three days. And two to three days, we can also search the book ISBN on places like Barnes & Noble. We can search that ISBN on um, bookshop.org and other places like that. And it should start to populate. Do know that sometimes the book listing will show up prior to the book cover. Sometimes the book listing with the details will show up in the book cover it takes a little bit longer. That's normal. It does take a couple of days for all the metadata to sync up. You'll also notice that right now it says revisions incomplete. That's just the system catching up to our approval. It can take a couple hours. Sometimes it can be as quick as just refreshing for that to actually show approval. There we go. And it says title available. Now Mary Lou can place orders for her own print copies if she'd like. So when you do this, important to note right here, you see this little kind of globe that is blue. This means that the book has been enabled for distribution. That means that it's enabled for distribution outside of Mary Lou's account so other people can order the book. If this is grayed out, that means that the book is not necessarily available for anyone else to order. So I've seen that happen before where people will not enable, they'll approve it for just their account to order copies so they can order a proof, but then they forget to go back in and enable the print distribution. If you do that, your book won't show up on Ingram for sale. It will not show up on websites because you haven't enabled that distribution. So if you do indeed choose to order a proof and a proof for just your account only, it's really important that when you're ready, that you go into the book you go to print info and you enable distribution. So you can see right now it says yes. If it says no, then there's a button that you push that says enable distribution. 
So keep that in mind if you do um, approve for your account only because you're not quite ready to go live. Now, if the book was set, let's say this book was set to come out and we put the sale date or the pub date for January 15th, by hitting the enable distribution, what happens is it creates pre-order links. So it does make the book live in the sense that you get a listing, but it's a pre-order link. It's not something people can order early if the pub date is further out than the current date. Um, and then if we'd like to place orders, you simply go to place order. When we go in here, if we would like to order copies of the book at the print cost as the publisher, you can do that. So you can see the print price is 517 and that's what's charged plus a handling fee and shipping and tax. But if you're looking for different options, um, first let's just quick go over this. This is how quickly the book is printed. If you go economy, which is the most often used, that means it'll print in about five business days. Sometimes it may be longer if they tell you print times are longer. Um, and then there's the express service and rush service if you're trying to get it more quickly. But keep in mind that if you have it printed rush service, it doesn't mean it will arrive faster if you don't choose an option for faster shipping. Now, next day shipping is very expensive, typically not going to make sense, but residential ground is recommended when you are doing this because that means there's a tracking number. So if you're doing a single copy, maybe you don't want to pay that extra fee, but if you are doing a hundred copies, something like that, it gives you not only insurance on the books, but it also gives you a tracking so that's typically recommended if you're ordering a large quantity. And the way that you update this, let's say we want we want 100 copies. Look, and enter 100 copies or more for a special festive offer. So it looks like there's discounts that'll pop up from time to time. And it's nice that it pops up right in the box. Um, so when you do this, you can just do that update order. And then what happens is it will update the order here and it will tell you the new price. There you go and you can see it's been updated. So now um, that print price is 507 and there's a hundred copies. So it's a little bit cheaper. And then we've still got our handling fee. We've got our shipping fee, which is obviously higher and our tax for our total. And then you could go through and submit your order if you're ready to do that. And there you have it. That is how you can do that. If you would like also, you can personalize it. So let's say I have one copy and I'd like to personalize it. This is another option that is available through Ingram Spark. So let's say that this, the 100 copies that I'm ordering are special for a book club. I can actually go in and I can personalize it specifically for them. So I could say, thank you, um, library name for choosing your numbers up for your, uh, for your book club reading. Enjoy. And then you can, you know, you can personalize it there. And you can also do fonts differently. So you can make it italics, different things like that. And then you can actually do that, which is fun. So you can put that on there. You can preview it and see what it'll look like. And it literally just goes, it adds a page in the front of the book with your personalization on it. So that is an option as well. And uh, just another fun thing that Ingram Spark offers that is nice. And then you can also remove that customization if we are not going to do that. And there you have it. That is the basics of how to upload a title to Ingram Spark. It's not hard. It will take you a little bit of time, especially in the beginning, but making sure you have everything lined up, you have the tools you need in order to get through that process makes it pretty simple. And I think it's something that definitely helps authors who are looking to go wide. If you have your print book, absolutely upload to KDP for Amazon. But if you are looking for wider distribution, if you're looking for a spot for 
bookstores to be able to order your book or libraries, or you want your book available in the .com stores or bookshop.org so that it can be ordered through local bookstores. I think that Ingram Spark definitely gives you that opportunity. Highly recommend. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I do check on those and let me know how it went. Let me know how your upload went and we'll check in.